Today, I'm showing you how to use the Novation Circuit Tracks and the Roland MC-101 together. Now, I've covered this a bit in the past. I've used them together quite a bit for songs and jams and such, and I've briefly showed a few different methods to get them to talk to each other well, but I think I've cracked the code on how to do this the most effectively, and I want to go way more in-depth than I previously have. And hopefully this advice translates somewhat to other groove boxes you might want to connect to the tracks. But first of all, let's hear the little track that I've got going here. Also, I'm going to answer some specific questions that I've got, including swapping patches out. So stay tuned through the whole video if you've been interested in giving this setup a go yourself. So first, on the tracks itself, we have our main lead. Bass pluck. That is lightly side-chained to our kick track. There is a clap, also living on the same track. Snare track. Because I wanted to be able to pitch the snare sample down the snares from my $5 sample pack. Analog snare sample for my Syntact. Very simple hi-hat. And a perk track. With some pitch automation that you'll hear. So far, so straightforward. And I also have synth one sent just a tiny bit to the reverb and delay. We're going to come back to those. Now we bring in our MC-101 tracks. Let me mute all this stuff. This is the first one. This little ARP thing. And... This too is side-chained to the kick bit more heavily because remember one of the wonderful things about the circuit tracks is that you can side chain your external audio to internal drum tracks and this is as good a time as any to talk about the routing and this is one of the things that i think i've been able to nail down my preferred method for let's start with the audio and then move our way into the midi so this track midi one right here this blue track is receiving this uh shiny audio cable coming out of the left channel of the MC-101. That's this right here. And the key thing here is that if I go into shift and then sound and then setting, you will see that this synth track is panned hard left, meaning that only MIDI 1 gets this part. MIDI 2 is receiving this gray electron cable coming out of the right output of the MC-101. And this track, as you may have guessed, is panned hard right. So our ARP thing is only coming out of the left channel, and our bass is only coming out of the right channel, going into MIDI 2. Also, I have taken the opportunity to send this pad into the tracks as well, also panned hard right, so it also is only going into MIDI 2. So that's the basic audio setup. The reason that I've chosen to separate out these parts is because it makes them a lot easier to deal with when dealing with reverb, delay, and sidechain. Because the other way that you could do this is just send your stereo outputs into the circuit and then pan MIDI 1 and MIDI 2 hard left and right. That gets really confusing to deal with and it doesn't allow you to say, treat a bass track differently than you treat a lead track. Like I mentioned, I have my big neo bass more heavily side chained to the kick than my ARP thing. Check this out. This remains untouched. And I can also dial in how much reverb and delay the individual tracks get. Now, that does mean that you're summing these lovely stereo synth patches down to mono, but you're usually going to be working with synths that only have mono outputs 
anyway. So in my mind, that's not really a huge deal. So that's the audio routing. Now let's get into the MIDI routing because it's very much related, but a little more complicated. I promise it's not too bad though. The easiest part is the fact that because this is a self-contained unit, all we need is one MIDI cable. So this MIDI cable is going from the Circuit Tracks' MIDI out and into the MC-101's MIDI in. So far, so straightforward. Now, you might have to finagle which channels your MIDI is active on on both devices in order to get this to work. So let me actually start on the MC-101 because that's going to be the thing receiving MIDI so we can plan ahead a little bit. If I go to Shift and then uh, Filter right here, you can see the little gray utility under here. If I click this and go into system. Let me show you this started from the beginning. We're gonna scroll until we get to track channel. So track channel one, track channel two, track channel three, track channel four. So this controls how each track receives MIDI or on which channel it receives MIDI. So right now, channel one, which is our drum track just by default, is receiving MIDI from channel one. That's why I've turned it all the way down. Track two right here, is also receiving MIDI from channel one. Track three is receiving MIDI from channel three. And track four is also receiving MIDI from channel three. I should note, if you go in and change this, by default, it's on channel four. And if you have two tracks sharing at the same channel, like we do with three and four, it'll put that little asterisk in there to indicate, hey, both of these tracks are receiving MIDI from the same channel. Armed with this knowledge, or maybe even having created this knowledge ourselves, we can now go to the circuit hit shift and then we get to the setup and now we can select which channel each track sends stuff on. So in this case, what I want to do is have MIDI one control the stuff in kind of the left audio channel and MIDI two control the stuff in the right audio channel. So let me select MIDI one here and you will see that you can select which channel you're sending MIDI to. In this case, MIDI one is sending MIDI via channel one. And hey, would you look at that track Two is receiving MIDI from channel one. So far, so good. If I choose MIDI two, MIDI two is sending MIDI on channel three. One, two, three. These two tracks right here, tracks three and four, are both receiving MIDI from channel three. So this MIDI two track is going to control both of these tracks at the same time. And sure enough, if I hit play to get out of this, You can hear, that's our track four, that's our track three. So you can just create like a double synth patch this way, which I think is really neat. And then let me turn this back on. All of our controls are working the way that we would like them to. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me know in the comments if you need further clarification, but hopefully I was able to explain that okay. The end result is that we have separated, in this case, ARP and bass slash pad tracks where MIDI 1 controls our ARP, MIDI 2 controls our bass slash pad, and the audio all is routed to match. So now we can start muting and unmuting to like build up a little arrangement. And the MC-101 is now just kind of a passive vessel for sound. Where the Trax is doing all the heavy lifting and all the thinking, the MC-101 is just a sound module. And that's my preferred way to route this whole thing. Now, I mentioned I was going to show you how to switch sounds out on the MC-101. And as it turns out, it's really easy. So I've set up a little uh, demonstration of this. On the MC-101, if you hit Shift and then your track of choice, you can set your sound source to be either by track or by clip. If you set it to be by clip, each clip you select can have a different sound on it. And if you're an experienced MC101 user, you're probably familiar with this and probably are already using it. The great thing is you don't have to be playing to be able to switch between clips. So if you ever want to be able to switch between sounds, 
you just have to set it up very much in advance and then switch clips on the fly. So let me show you how this works. I'm gonna isolate track four. So I'm gonna start with this clip active and then I'm gonna switch to my other clip which has a different preset loaded onto it. Like you could get really creative with this if you wanted to. You could take this pretty far for some pretty trippy effects. So it does require some forethought and planning, but hey, jamming in a setup like this usually does anyway. So to me, that's totally fine. That's going to be how you're going to deal with that. Also, pro tip, if you want to do the whole layered elements being controlled by one track thing, but you want them to be pitched differently, say at different octaves, like in this case, I want this neural bass to be at a lower octave than our pad. In order to do that, you can go to shift, sound, setting, and then go all the way until you hit course tune. And then you can manually tune this up or down. So let me uh, tune this up to 24 just so you can hear the difference. And if you wanted to do some kind of weird harmony stuff, you could do that too, but I'm just keeping it super simple for this example. The other nice thing about this setup, by the way, is the fact that let's say you're working on a track and you want to come back to it. But if you were to have like, say, two separate hardware synths, you might have to set those up again. The nice thing with this is that once you've got your routing set, you can save separate projects. Like you can save your kind of sound vessel projects on the MC-101. Maybe even name it something like tracks number blank. One thing that I've like toyed around with, and I don't always do it, but one thing I will sometimes do is make notes on where stuff is living on my tracks with like a row and column system, like a chessboard. So you could go like gate drum two, and that will like get you to which thing is holding that project. So you could name your MC101 project like tracks gate drum two or something like maybe that's a bit overkill and a lot of us are probably just going to like set up a jam once and then once we've recorded it never touch it again but that's something that i found useful that might help you out if you own a novation circuit tracks and a roland mc 101 or even a similarly good sound moduli groove box i highly recommend giving this a go it's a lot of fun it creates a fairly compact setup and has a surprising amount of power that you can get out of said compact setup. If you'd like to see some more Synthwave made with this combination, you can check this video out up over here. And if you'd like to see a slightly alternate way of routing this stuff, you can check this video out up over here. That's quite a bit older, but still pretty fun. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.